हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज योर फेवरेट मुर्तेद लाइव वंस अगेन सलाम उल मसीह पीस ऑफ क्राइस्ट बी विद ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू आई होप यू आर यू गाइस आर हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ फन एंड यू गाइस हैव शेयर्ड द लिंक ऑफ दिस वीडियो टू एवरीवन बिकॉज़ टुडे इज लाइव वीडियो इज गोइंग टू रिवील अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स व्हिच यू माइट नॉट हैव heard before rather let me just say most of you have not heard about them most of you and when i say most of you you know i literally mean 99% of you for sure and even if certain people who have heard about it they would have they would enjoy it a lot as well because this is going to give you more insight on everything so now without any delay now is the time for you to share this video link in your social media platforms if you have not done that yet share it share it bring your friends bring your families here we are going to go deep into how the quran is written and what language the quran is written in which supposedly muslim claim that it is in arabic and for that we have a very good arabic speaker ex muslim with us you might have heard him before his name is murad so let's bring saint murad up live let's give him a warm welcome brother murad welcome Hello Adam it's great to be with you the very first time that we actually talk live and it is a privilege for me to be here Thank you so very much brother the honor is mine thank you for accepting to come here and spend your time here with me may the lord bless you and keep you safe from these muslimins who want to hurt you because you are an ex muslim i i that's how it is <laughs> Yes exactly. <laughs> How amazing it is that as soon as you leave this cult I I I call it cult I don't call it a religion anymore because uh you can come to a religion and you can leave a religion. Religion is something that you accept from your heart and your mind and you can leave from your heart and your mind. But only when it comes to a cult that's when you actually leave you are to be killed. So I have to call it a cult. Yes it's like the mafia you're either in or you're against and then you have to be killed <laughs> Well said brother well said like we have seen a lot of mafia videos films and uh, yeah you leave a mafia by by time to your life that's that's how it is that's the reality Yes but if if these people they knew what the Quran is actually saying and that it's not exactly in arabic and it's not saying what they are hearing and this is only from the sunna then they will change their mind because what we know today about the quran actually comes from the later sunna and it's imposed on it by people who were persian who didn't know either arabic or aramaic so that's what we will see in this live stream wow so for all the muslimin watch listen carefully watch and then prepare your refutations if you can and then let us know that you can refute it but for now let's see what it is brother the mic is yours the stage is yours let me know what you need me to show and we will show it brother okay so today it's just like an uh, an amateur presentation i did not present something tangible but still because this is the first time for the viewers so i wanted to be like slowly talk to them about it and then in the future we might make more presentations about it the question is is the quran an arabic book actually uh, it says that it says that as we know today but you see it is very very rare to find any book in the world saying that it is in a certain language when you can see that it's in a certain language 
So you will never find a Greek book saying, I am Greek. This is crazy. So you have either that the author is stupid or that the, there is a different story. This is the logical thing uh, to think. Now, wow, wow. Now that's, Murad, brother Murad, that's a very, very interesting analogy and a very, very interesting uh, point of view to see. Like most of the Muslimin and even even most of non Muslimin don't don't even look at it. Like why would an Urdu book say this is a book in Urdu? Why would a Hindi book would say this is a Hindi book in a book in Hindi? Why would an English book say this is a book in English and so on and so forth? That's a very, very good analysis to begin with. I, I love it. Yes, and if it will say it Maybe for some reason it will say it once, twice, but to say it multiple times, it, it means that there is a problem. So <clears throat> we can just look at a certain point and it is that no one ever understood the Quran from A to Z. This is a fact. This is number one. And when you have a book that you never understand from A to Z, not as a meaning, but as the words, the word itself doesn't have a meaning it means that you do not know the language so it's not like uh, in the bible are we uh, talking about uh, the nature of christ or something this is not a theological debate this is about the word what does the word mean as a translator i want to translate this text no one understands it from a to z this in itself says that there is a problem that the book is not Arabic. And uh, if you want to comment, and then I will tell you something else. No, brother. I, I, like, I, I'm, I'm shocked that all my life, why have I never thought about it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, there are books from the past uh, that Muslims themselves wrote declaring the difficult words in the Quran. So there is a book called غريب القرآن meaning the strange things of the Quran and these people they don't know at all what these words mean and there is also a lot of books talking about certain words being borrowed into Arabic people today say well you can borrow from any language okay then why were you struggling to get the meaning of the word I know that you can borrow from any language but why are you struggling? Why are you always struggling? This is because it's not Arabic. And another <coughs> thing to look at is that the English Quran translations are very different. Take a look at any English Quran. You will find that it's different in a crazy way. It's not just normally different. But if you take English Bibles, let's say we read Genesis from the king james or the niv or anything else no big difference so why when you translate the quran you have these immense differences simply because the translator doesn't know what he is reading and he keeps guessing and guessing and guessing and trying to make the best case for allah by lying because this is of course normal this is what you are getting and a third point is that you can say like the chicken or the egg, which one came first? Do you have Arabic before the Quran? No, you don't. You don't have it on manuscript. You don't have it on rocks. You don't have it on coins. You don't have it anywhere. Some people will lie and say that there was Arabic, but that was not Arabic also. That was Nabataean. Yes, it evolved into Arabic but it was Nabataean. Other people will lie and say, well, what about um, the Arabic in, in Yemen? Well, this is a, another Arabic. This is not the Arabic of the Quran. And why wasn't the Quran written in the Arabic of Yemen, which was perfect? You see? So you didn't have Arabic, and you didn't have, and, and no one understands the Quran from A to Z, no matter how good the Sheikh is. No matter how how much muscles you have, like Muhammad Hijab, still he doesn't know from A to Z. 
no matter uh, how much time they spend into trying to twist it. And the third thing is that no English Quran agrees with another English Quran. Ever. Ever. In awesome. any subject. Because they don't know what they are reading. So is the Quran in Arabic? You could say that at least it is not 100% Arabic. This is for sure. This is for sure. But Arabic, brother, is evolved from Nebatese, Nebatean and Hebrewic and Greek languages in itself as well. Isn't it so? And Aramaic, I think. Yes, uh, the nature of languages is, is that they morph and they merge and they come together. So this is not a problem. I'm just talking now about the people who say that it doesn't have any word that is not Arabic. So I ask him why when you translate it into English, you are always confused and you always keep guessing and you always keep changing. Uh, so let's see one, the first chapter of Quran, which is Surah Baqarah, ayat number two. I'm, I'm going to give you an example, obviously. These are the English translation of because Alif Lam Mim apparently has no meaning. Uh, we will see that as well. But the yeah. second surah, Zalik al Kitab Ularai Bafi. Uh, and it says, This is the book, there is no doubt about it, a guidance for those mindful of Allah. But other translation, this becomes that, and book becomes scripture. That is the scripture, there is no doubt about it, a guidance for mindful. Then it comes into that book has no doubt a guidance for god fearing then another this is a book and i'm not going to read the braces whereof there is no doubt a guidance to those who are al muttaqin man seriously the pious believer of islamic monotheism who fear allah much abstain from all kind of sin and evil deeds which has forbidden that's a mouthful and love of allah much <laughs> perform all kind of good deeds <laughs> Sorry about but, that. But let me ask you, does this man have dignity that he fills the West with all this and it's only like five words or something? I have no idea, man. That's that's Muhammad Taqiyuddin Al-Hilali and Muhammad Mohsin Khan, man. Even his name is a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is saying... <laughs> This is a Quran. I have never seen Quran in the Arabic of it, but this is the Quran in which there is nothing of any doubt, neither in terms of its origin nor in terms of its meaning. Man, seriously. Zalik al Kitabu Bafi? Like, how, how can you get this out of that? Now, why they do that? Because they know that there is no punishment. They know that no one will come after them and tell them what did you do so they keep lying because they have nothing to fear they say here god fearing they don't fear god because uh, they know that they can get away with it but okay. if you look also at the word zalik we know Means. in arabic that zalik is that it's for the far not for the close exactly so do you say means this, book? this sorry brother yes sorry. yeah yeah ha ha is this zalik is that why do you say this here? Because you have an agenda to say that uh, this is the Quran when it's actually talking about something else. So this is what you get from the English translations. Yeah, and then it says it is the word of Allah. Where does it say Haza Kalamatullah? It isn't in the Arabic. Like all of these mistranslations, and we are talking about the major Arabic Muslim scholars who did these translations. And none of them are true to the word which is which states there. None of them are true to the word which says in Arabic. None of them. Exactly. And if you can, can you just uh, hover over Zalik? Zalika means that. <laughs> okay. So, and 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 below it is this. Below is this. And and by the way, I have shown multiple tafsirs on this, and I have a video called "That Means This." Okay. Yeah. In, 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 in that video, what I've shown is, uh, I think, eight or nine different scholars of Islam who wrote tafas, Tafasir. For example, At-Tibri, Jalalain, Qurtubi, uh, Ar-Razi and all. They are saying, uh, here, 
Zalika Bamana Haza, which translates into here that meaning this. What do you mean by that? How can that means this? <laughs> Zalika Bamana Haza. Some even says Zalika Ai Haza. Brother, can you translate that? <laughs> Yeah, he's saying that means this. <laughs> and this, this, this is this is how they actually show it. It's like a it's like a very small video that means this. Uh, it's like a 11 minute video. Let me give it to my audience so they can watch later. But whoever wants to see that means this, they can they can watch it. Brother, please carry on. Sorry, sorry for this uh, interruption in the middle. I just wanted to show no, what no, you're saying is, is right. Uh, this goes very well with uh, what we are saying. So here, <clears throat> it is very actually logical to say that the the language of the Quran was not Arabic because the lingua franca or the language being spoken at that time at the oldest area was Aramaic. So logically, when you write a book, it will be Aramaic. So Aramaic was the language of the Quran, and this is very easy to imagine. Now, there is a scholar called Gabriel Sauma, who I sent you his uh, the link of his book, and he reads the, uh, the Quranic manuscripts as he reads the newspaper. It's very easy for him to read and understand, and it doesn't say what we think it says this is the one the Quran misinterpreted mistranslated and misread so as you can see people later when they grabbed the Quran which is Aramaic they were Arabs and they didn't know what it was talking about then they had to add the diacritical marks to make sense of it and to make it close to their tongue their Arabic tongue you see <clears throat> interesting so now I will give you some examples of words that we think are Arabic and we don't know exactly what they mean we just assume what they mean and one word would be Ummi what do you think Ummi means uh, it has used in Quran in two different ways Ummi is used as the person who does not know the earlier scriptures and when it is used for Muhammad, it says illiterate. So take your pick. Exactly, but now it's it's when it's in the Quran, it's written by only one way. And Ummi, it has over it something called Shadda and Fatha. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is diacritical marks. When you have a Shadda, it means that you you mixed two letters together. So to get it to its original form. You will have to remove the shadda, and then you will have two memes. So it will be omami, not ommi. Right? Yes. So what does omami mean? It means someone who is from the nations, someone who is not Jewish, a Gentile. As simple as that. So Rasul al ummi is the Gentile prophet. And as you can see, when you read it throughout the Quran, it makes more sense. But now they say it is unlettered. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like here it says Al Ummi, right? Al Ummi, yeah. So you are saying if you remove the Shadda from the meme? Yeah. Okay. So it will become Ammi, Al Ammi. No, no, it will become, you will, uh, you, it will be two memes. Because you remove the Shadda, then it, it will, will be, be two uh, memes. Ah, uh, because Shadda and makes two different sound. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. It will be al umami Yeah. The Gentile. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me just show it here to the people yeah. what we are talking about. Correct me if I'm wrong on the screen. This is al umami Okay, so what you are saying is, let me take the word from, from the Arabic as well, so that we can show what we are talking about. <clears throat> this is interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to do a lot of fun here, guys. We didn't even scratch the surface. 
See. Oh yes, we have known. So what our brother is saying that this word over here, this this diacritical marking over here, this is called shadda. Okay, this is called shadda. So the purpose of shadda is to make the meme sound double. So if we have to remove the shadda and open it, it will become two memes: meme and then meme and then ya. So it will it will sound at al al ammimi or ummimi yeah, because there's yeah, a page because there's a page so ummimi yeah. that's a that's a and it means gentiles exactly yeah. wow awesome so so that clearly shows that the Muhammad was out of gentiles but re in reality if we look at it Quran in the context of it like context of different uh, different words right if you look at it Quran actually uses al ummi in a different way as well because if we look at Quran chapter number 2 verse number 78 brother there is no other way to translate it why because Quran actually says wow wow this is good this is really good because wa min hum ummiyun la ya'lamun al kitab and among them are illiterate who know nothing about the scripture so by default Quran is giving the definition of Ummi as the people who does not know the previous scriptures. But but hold on. Yes. Ummiyun here also means Gentile. Because back in the day, uh, the Gentiles did not know the scripture. They did not. Because here, we are also conditioned to think that the word Kitab could mean like the Bible or sometimes mean something else. But Kitab is on, only the Bible, the mm -hmm. scripture. Exactly. So, uh, al -kitab. of course, the Gentiles don't know the scripture. <laughs> this is not a problem. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Lovely. See? So, this is just one example. If you want me to carry on. Please, brother, be my guest. Give me the verses and I will be delighted. There is this word called Furqan. And Furqan. no one knows the meaning of it it says وَأَتَيْنَ مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْقَانِ let me hold on and let me check the word where to find it it is in surah 2 uh, 156 okay yeah 253 okay see how they translate furqan and you will laugh uh, criterion so it is Furqan is used in multiple time in Quran and Allah made Quran Furqan over the scriptures yeah as well so if you look at the word Furqan it's very well known in Aramaic it is Furqunu or Furqana and it only has one meaning and that is redemption so we gave Moses the book which is of course the scripture the Torah and the redemption from Egypt and every time you see this word it means redemption and it's always connected with Moses now when they say al furqan means the Quran then you know that you are speaking with someone who is stupid how did Moses get the Quran so al furqan means redemption and also in the Quran I'm sure that there is one verse says faraqnakum which means we redeemed you out of Egypt, of course. We redeemed you. Man. So as you can see, you're just scratching the surface and everything becomes much more clear. There is also this word, Tawaffa. We know... Tawaffa, yeah. We raised him to ourselves. Allah says that. Yeah, but in the Quran you have the word mata. Mata is died because the opposite of it is istahya or let live. Like Pharaoh, he istahya, he let the women live of Israel. So when you have mata, you can't also have tawaf. So if this is died, then this one has to mean something else. But tawaf, it actually means fulfill. Okay, so okay, you will okay. find them 
hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. We have to go a little slow because you know Arabic and I'm trying to run with you in Arabic because I've read the Arabic Quran. But most of our viewers do not know Arabic. So we have to go a little slow, even if we have okay. to do five different live streams because we have to show them what is happening, what is the verses saying, how they translated versus how it is supposed to be. So, okay, no problem. So you have to be a little slow. So Falamma Tawaffa Tawaffaitani should be in 355 i think 355 let me go to 355 let's show the people how they translate otherwise i'm i'm very sure most of our western viewers will not be able to uh work with us uh no it doesn't say tawaffa can you give me the ayah of the tawaffa yes it, it's the it same is. word it's the same word mutawafika comes from tawaffa no problem no, but there is other one which says Matawafi, like not Matawafaika, but anyhow. No, no, it's it's the same. You're just thinking Arabic. It's the same. Okay. Inni Mutawafika, we, they say it's something like I am letting you die. But of course here it says I will take you because yep. the man doesn't know <laughs> what the word means. But Mutawafi, it means I am fulfilling you. Tawafa, when you say that uh, the soul tawafit it means that it fulfilled mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. and rafa'uka means I am raising you mutahiraka it's I am sanctifying you or purifying you you see Good. yes so now in Aramaic how would you do that once again it will be um when God said to Isa, indeed I am letting you fulfill and raising you to me and purifying you. So letting you fulfill yeah. uh, what has been given in the past to exactly. about, about you that you will come and you will fulfill all what the prophets have said and you will going to be crucified. And actually, from the words of Jesus, he said something like, I did not come to debunk the law, but I came to fulfill. Yeah. So this is exactly the word, and there is no problem. Every time you will use this word in the Quran, it gives this meaning. So why are people uh, playing around with this? Because it has to do with Isa? This is, you should have some dignity, the people who are translating, of course. Oh man, love you, brother. Awesome, that's awesome. And this is this is what you are referring to is from the book uh, of uh, our brother that I showed earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow, what is his name? Sorry, let me let me check Gabriel. his name again. Gabriel. Sauma. Let me give the link to everyone, guys. You need to read. You need to get this book as well. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Yes, brother. Next verse. Next, uh, we will look at Alif Lam Mim because awesome. this is a special to you. I know you like this one. Oh, I love it. Alif Lam Mim. <laughs> now, just when you look at it, I will ask you something. Is this word connected or disconnected? Like when you look at the letters, Connected. How will you read it? Connected. Alam. So it will be, and, and you have these two diacritical marks above, so it will be a lam, not a lam, lam meme. Absolutely. Right? So if I write the name Adam, I will say Adam, but if I tell you A D A M, you will say that I'm a lunatic. So these words, these letters are connected, and they do have a meaning in Aramaic. If you remove the diacritical marks, which are these two marks above, then you are left with Alim. Alim. People will say, why remove the diacritical marks? Well, because it is a new invention to begin with. Remove it. Let's go back to the original form of the Quran as much as we can. Because the diacritical marking were added 300, 250 to 300 years after the Quran is read. Uh, rather, 300 years after uh, yes, the Quran. So Muhammad. It's an invention that is not good and we don't want it now. Yeah. 
So you are left with alim. Alim, it's an Aramaic word. And it means be silent. And it is a word that is used in churches when the priest finishes the mass. He says something like, God be with you. And so, there is something that you say, be silent. And in the beginning of the mass, I am talking about the Syriac churches. This is something maybe they don't do now. I'm not sure. Alim. Is Alim. be silent because now we are going into the into worship. So be silent. Do not raise voices now. Now let's go into the worship time. Exactly. So and in the Syriac, people are still using Alim. Exactly. So here, if it is the first word of the Quran, in reality, basically, if you look at it, Surah Bakra, be silent, let me tell you what I'm saying, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so all these Muslim scholars from the 1400 years who are banging their heads on the walls, trying to see what is the meaning of this word, these idiots just has to go into the Syriac language and see how it originated? Exactly, because these people, they never knew Syriac, they never knew Aramaic, and where were these people? You have to ask this question. They were Persians, they were Asiatics, they were Turks, they were Ottomans. Of course they won't know. But the Quran says you should ask the people who recite the book before you. These Aramaic Syriac people, they are the ones who will tell you. This is exactly how it should be. They should be humble and ask the Christians and the Jews who know this tongue and who know Syriac, Hebrew, Aramaic, and everything will be fine. You see? Wow. Wow. Man, this is awesome. So, just by looking at the very basic stuff, Quran doesn't look like to be in Arabic. And all the problematic words that we see, Alam, like Alif Lam Meem, or Mutawafaiq, because there's an Arabic scholar, brother, who said, who were giving a tafsir of Mutawafaiq. It's like, it's, it's not... That, uh, that Isa was uh, um, dead. Allah muni muka. Mm. He, but, Allah uh, made nam, Jesus nam muni muka. But nam means sleep. Doesn't mean die. Yeah, so that's what, I, what he's saying. He's saying, inni muni muka. So you should understand that Allah made Jesus sleep muni muka, not mutawafaika. But Allah says mutawafaik. How, how, how can you make Muni? How can you make him go to sleep when Allah says Mutawafaiq? So even the Arabic scholars are trying to give words of what Allah is supposed to say. Yes, and they are doing this because deep inside they feel that maybe they will um, th that will be for, for the Christians and not against them. So here you are putting your agenda. And this is not someone who has dignity. You should step out completely and see what the Quran is saying. And the Quran is head over heels for Jesus. This is especially if you read it in the Aramaic. So uh, no problem there. Wow. Wow. Okay. Brother, next example. I'm so keen to learn more, man. There is this word, Kawthar. If you know about it, it's one of the last uh, surahs, which is the small surah one. Kosar. Yeah, Surah yeah. Kosar. That's the, that's the water that Muhammad is going to be given to give to everyone because Allah took all of his kids away from him. Uh, so Allah gave him the Hawze Kosar so that at the day of uh, judgment, when the, most, when the sun will be at... <coughs> excuse me. When the sun will be at... Uh, one and a half breath length, Muhammad will give uh, water to his people. What is the Surah Kosa? What is the number? Of 108. Eight. Yeah, 108. There we go. Yeah, that's 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 the hose uh, that Muhammad will be given. So every Muslim who will be at the Day of Judgment, Muhammad will give him the water from the Hawze Kosa so that they will be repellished of thirst because of the sun will be so close, you know. Okay, I will I will just ask you to look at the translations. Even here in this Sahih International, it writes it as it is. It says al kawthar and they don't have a meaning. Now, I remember that 
the tafsirs, which is the what, what's tafsir? It's like the Ibn Kathir, Jalain, Qurtubi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. These people, they are also keep guessing. They say Al Kawthar might be a river in Jannah, mm -hmm. and it might mean the abundance in the children for Muhammad, and it might mean this and that. I also uh, notice that any time these people get lost, they say it is something in Jannah. It's a river. It's uh, it's wine. It's uh, it's a bed in Jannah. It's anything in Jannah. Just to throw it away because they don't know. And in the end, they say Allahu A'lam, meaning God knows best. I want to tell them. Also, the Aramaic people know best because you have to ask them. <laughs> Yeah, and make people the best. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, don't just go to Allah and be lazy. Go to the Aramaic people. Tell them, how would you read this one? So the word Kawthar, if you look at uh, uh, these three dots on the Tha, this is extra. Mm -hmm. It should be Kuttar. So it will be two dots, Kuttar. Oh. My, 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 my. Because, okay, let me tell the people what is happening over here. So, guys, you probably know my videos where I have shown multiple times that the dots were added over 200 years after uh, the death of Muhammad. Okay. So, when the original Quran was written, it had no dots. Okay, so let me show you what the original Quran, supposed original Quran, supposed original Quran would have, would be looking like. So the supposed original Quran, this Kauthar would be, look like, Aw, Kau, Thar, nothing. That's, that's how it was written. What our brother here is saying, that somebody added three dots here. Why? Why three dots? Why not? It should have only two dots. And what will it mean, brother? Al Qutr, it's an Aramaic word, and it means something like continuation, you see. But not any type of continuation. It's the continuation in prayer. And it's something also that has a Christian root. Because when you have the power to continue in prayer, it means that uh, you are enjoying you see you enjoy the prayer so it's oh. something like continuation enjoying in prayer yeah wow wow and and, and a lot of lot of christians they enjoy prayer i have seen uh, i can't do that but i've seen people staying in prayer for hours and hours and hours I can do maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours at max. But some people just keep on praying. They, 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 they can just be in it. And wow. Wow. Yes. So it's saying, indeed, we have given you the continuation of time so that you enjoy the prayer. And next you will, let's go at the other word after I'm it in going. the same verse. Yeah, yeah. I am there. Fazalili Rabbika Wanhar. Okay. The word Enhar, what does it mean? According to here, it's sacrifice. Sacrifice doesn't mean. Sacrifice is, does not mean Anhar. Sacrifice is uh, Zibiha Baha. or Baha. Baha, okay. Baha, Baha. Mm -hmm. So sacrifice is Baha. That's why in Arabic we say Eidul Adha, meaning the feast of the sacrifice. But in her, it means slaughter. But of course, the fraudulent uh, translation will never say slaughter because they know that it will be very harsh. Oh However, my goodness. Oh yes, this, my is, goodness. this is in Arabic. This is in Arabic. However, this is not an Arabic word. So, anhar means slaughter. So, hold in on. Arabic. Brother, be before you go into Aramaic, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You said Zibya, right? Yeah. We can see that in Quran chapter number 37, verse number 107. Because that is where Allah says that we gave Musa, uh, sorry, Abraham a great sacrifice. Bazibihal Azim. Okay? Bazibihal Azim. The Zibha. Right? Yeah. 
we we ransom him with a great sacrifice to abraham right yeah. so the same word bezibia is sacrifice as you said right but no, here no, no, no. it's no, unhar no, no. no hold on hold on holding we on, have three, we have three things mm-hmm. in har mm-hmm. in arabic it means something like decapitate decapitate it's, yeah izbah or zibhin like the one with ibrahim mm-hmm. it means slaughter It doesn't mean sacrifice but bahha or bahi it means sacrifice which is also in the quran i think once or something so you have okay. three words that have three meanings but anhar, anhar in arabic simply means like beheading somebody yeah oh my goodness let's see if somebody actually translated as beheading hold on hold on hold on let's see Let's see. Maybe somebody. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Let's see. I need to get Usama Duck Dog here to see if if he, he how he has translated it. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we have here. Hold on. Okay. Is this uh, forget the closer. Uh, the one uh, we know. No, he denounced it. He said that's not him. But yeah, we yeah. think he, because he uses this translation, so we think it is him. But he denounces it. He says no, it's not him. Oh. Sacrifice, 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 slaughter. See, see, see this guy? Yeah, Dr. Ghali. He said slaughter, but again, he said sacrifice because he knows that this is too bloody. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. The rest is sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on, hold on. I have another idea. Hold on. There is another browser. where we get uh non muslim scholars translating the quran yeah. okay this is 108 colon 2 and we will get, get non muslim let's see how they did it non muslims arbery sacrifice slaughter slay yes and If the lord slay If you use Google Translate, it says slay. Oh my God! You got it, man. So no non-Muslims actually know how to translate it much better. <laughs> yeah, because the the most like the inhar it is actually decapitate. This is exactly it. This is nahar. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. of course, no one will say decapitate because then it will be too bloody. They and they give themselves the right. to uh, to say whatever they like because no one will go after them okay interesting interesting so that's pretty bad but now let's move into how it should be in aramaic how it should be in aramaic is that this is missing a dot below the ha because okay. in the kufic script it is injar not inhar my god okay i'm going i'm going back into the paint brush yes so i'm going to forget the wow because wow just means and okay it means and and yeah. we don't need yeah. that so anhar it should be anjar so noon the the dot here shouldn't be here but rather it should be below it to make it anjar what does that mean no means? no no the noon the noon is okay i'm saying add another one below the oh. ha in the ha okay so it's like yeah. it's similar very similar let's just let's just move that a little bit here so leave that here and that here okay exactly. okay let's do let's do this okay let's do this okay let's cut that part because that means and and add another dot okay interesting anger anger what does this mean it means persevere persevere in your prayer so indeed we have given you the continuation of time so persevere in your prayer oh persevere in prayer persevere in your prayer so you carry on with your prayer so we have given you a enjoyment in the prayer yeah we gave so you the time we gave you a... yeah, exactly exactly 
Oh man, and that that actually sounds very good and goes by the by the sentence as well. If you look at it, let's go back because look, 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 look. If I translate it according to what you are saying, according to the Syriac root words, yes, indeed, we have given you, granted you, what uh, a enjoyable the prayer, time. enjoyment uh, and time and prayer, yeah. And so pray to your Lord, Fasalli Rabbika, and 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 persevere in your prayer. Man, that makes <laughs> that makes it clear. <laughs> now, if you go below and mm -hmm. continue, it says in Nashani Akahu al Aptar. This last word, I I did not prepare this, but I will tell you. This last word, al Aptar. Of course, they translated as castrated. Because this is supposedly a surah talking to Muhammad, telling him that your enemies are castrated. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is stupid. al aptar it's an Aramaic word that means defeated. So Shani'aka, it's your enemy. Your enemy will be defeated. He will not be cut off. He will not be castrated or anything. Your enemy, which is the devil, will be defeated. And you can find, of course, this same idea in, uh, uh, in the Bible. Of your devil being defeated when you persevere in prayer mm -hmm. so this works perfectly fine of course indeed your enemy is the one who will be persevere so but like bible talks about devil to be yes be yes defeated. your bye, enemy bye. your bye, who bye. Is your enemy in the prayer it's the devil so it's no problem true that true that awesome awesome <laughs> I was thinking as a Muslim because when, when we talk about a Muslim, everyone is an enemy of Islam, you know, other than Muslim, everyone is the enemy. So and special, the biggest enemy is Yahud, you know, the, the, the Jews. Uh, so I was thinking as a Muslim, but like if we take the context of this uh, surah, you are in prayer. So you are you, your, your enemy should be devil only because, oh, man, wh wow. <laughs> because you see, we are conditioned to think that this is a speech to Muhammad and his enemies and the Jews and all this stuff so you are going with the wrong mindset the Quran doesn't know these people and I think also that he doesn't know Muhammad but this stuff is later imposed as I told you before on the Quran through the, uh, the Hadith and Sunnah and through these Persians who, these Abbasid Persians who came later you see man this is this is a you are doing a what do you call it postmortem of the Quran right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now let's look at the word kafir. Kafir. Kafir, of course, anyone would say disbeliever or mm -hmm. infidel, and this is the most known word to uh, the West. And the Muslims, of course, they like to keep saying it kafir, not just infidel. They, because they want to teach you the Arabic and they want to impose their uh, their agenda through teaching you this word but the word kafir actually it uh, it's also found in English and you will find this funny if you say really? kafara yeah if you say kafara mm. and just flip this f into v you will find kavara cover meaning to cover, to hide, to conceal the truth. So a kafir is someone who conceals the truth, who hides the truth, has nothing to do with being an atheist <laughs> or anything like that. Man, and so, but like, but how do you flip it? You know, that's 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 what I want to know because when we, I don't know why my, now the crowd... No, no, I'm, is, saying, is, oh. I'm saying if you say in English, kafar, mm. it is the same as covered cover okay I'm just saying that we we retain the same word i'm not saying it's uh, an english word it means conceal or hide mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cover yeah and in the quran in arabic and multiple times also it says they conceal so they hide the truth this is kafar oh so when you know the truth about god and about his miracles, you hide this truth and you don't believe in it. You see, this is kafir. 
Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. That is, that is very, very interesting how, how you are doing these translations and crazy, crazy, crazy. Now, I want to tell you also about the word Quran itself. Yes. Does this word have a meaning? I would ask any Muslim and they will never have an answer. They will say it means the reading. Someone says it means the recitation. And someone says uh, we don't know. It's just the word of God and stuff. Yeah, Why because Quran, that? if we look at Quran itself, uh, because it's, this word has been used many times in Quran, and uh, they say... It depends on when it says just Qara or this is the Qara, they will say it is the recitation. But when it is used as Quran, they will simply say this is Quran. Quran is Quran, the Quran, the Qara of the Muhammad, which was given to him by the Jibra'il and all that kind of stuff. You know the whole nine yard. Yeah. But you see, Professor Christoph Luxemburg, who I, I showed you his book, mm -hmm. he gets this exact word from the Syriac dictionary which predates the Quran and it has the exact same word which is Qiryana or Quryono because oh of course what oh my god I was like sorry please carry on yeah 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 so Qiryana or Quryono in either in, in Western Syriac or in Eastern Syriac these are dialects or tongues as the Quran says tongue mm -hmm. it means a lectionary that is being read in the church, a Christian lectionary. The lectionary of hymns that you read, you know, when you go to church. Yeah, yeah, him, there's a book of hymns. Some some churches have the book of hymns where are there are just songs that, that you sing. Exactly. That's why in the Quran, if you remember, Alif Lam Mim, it says, be silent, because this stuff is used to being read aloud. That's why it's something that you read and you look at it at the same time while you are at church. This is the word. So Quran is a lectionary. Oh my God. That is why it is in the poetry form. Exactly. Oh, oh, <laughs> man, you just hit the nail. That's, I, dude, this is the thing that you should tell in the, in the end. That's the final nail in the coffin. So... Oh my, oh my goodness, that's crazy. Actually, there are also, uh, uh, there is an old Quran manuscript, one of the many, that has crosses inside them, not numbers. You see, so it was more like a Christian heresy, how Islam began, uh, monotheistic, that goes back to uh, the old uh, religion of Abraham. And it was very anti-Trinitarian. This is what we are finding now. You see? But like, there is a fair possibility that the heresy, the stupid heretical part was added much later. Because if you look at into Quran, you can have sex with slaves. You will have uh, girlfriends in the heaven where you will have sex. All of these things are neither present in in the Old Testament or the New Testament, quite frankly. So... How can a heretic cult go this far off? I think, like, there could be, like, I, I don't know. It's it's so hard to pinpoint at a point, you know. Like, like all the cults that are related to Quran, uh, like the cults of Christian cults, uh, they are pretty close to Christianity, right? Like, mm. none of them are that far off. You know what I mean? Yes, the how it, it got to be later, it has got more... Persianized. This is the Persian influence from the Abbasids that came later because, of course, whoever wins, uh, he is the one who writes history. So the Abbasids, they destroyed the Umayyads and they destroyed their literature. That's why you have this 200-year uh, gaps from Muhammad all the way to the Abbasids because the Abbasids destroyed the Umayyads. So you don't have uh, a huge chunk of the important bits uh, there. 
because uh, now if if I move to the next one, I will tell you exactly what I mean. Oh man, uh, uh, you have no idea how much I am enjoying this live stream. I don't know about my viewers right now, but today I am having a field day, brother. Please let me know where to go. I am loving it, man. Like seriously, I, you know how long I have been a Muslim. I've been a Muslim for over 36 years of my life, right? 38 yeah. to be precise. But like the last two years, I was like very, very saddened, you know, yeah. in doubt. Yet I was offering prayer. I was like, "Come on, Allah, give me, give me, give me the hadaya, give me the hadaya. Don't let me go astray and all that kind of stuff, you know." Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, I was like. It's nothing there, but like now when I look at it, like the way you are describing it, and I haven't read the book, and now that you are describe and you are telling me, man, I'm enjoying it far more than than my viewers. You know, I don't know, maybe maybe my viewers would be enjoying as well, but I am loving it. Uh, well, I hope they are they are enjoying it because uh, I like presenting this material, and I see a lot of people they are uh, putting very positive comments here. So I thank them sincerely. Awesome, awesome, guys! Don't forget to like uh, and subscribe to our brother's channel. Let me show you his channel. His channel is Saint Murad. Uh, before our brother go into the next point, it's like you guys have to subscribe to his channel. He doesn't have enough videos right now, but I am very sure he's gonna put up a lot of videos. He used to work with uh, Speaker Soko Speaker, right? Sneakers Corner with an Sneakers. N. I I still every now and then collaborate, of course, with Mel from Sneakers Corner because uh, I love the material that he presents. So uh, thank you. But like you have to put some videos here. So brothers and sisters, here is our brother. I am sending the link in the live chat as well. This is the link of our brother Murad's channel. Please go and subscribe to his channel as well. And I am very sure Murad will be putting up a lot of videos. I got Murad from Sneakers Corner, yes. And I saw one of his videos and I was like, man, this guy is crazy. But then I then I literally watched a few of his videos. And I was like, man, this guy is literally talking sense. And uh, yeah, I've been trying to catch a hold of brother Murad for some time. And finally, uh, today was the day when we could actually have some discussion. So brother Murad, seriously speaking, I am delighted. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you very much. I, I really love being here. And uh, I want to tell the people that the reason I'm not putting a lot of videos these days is because I'm working on translating the Quran and also I have a job. So it's killing my time, but it will be like the most accurate. And I say this not narcissistically. I say this because I will show exactly in the preface of my Quranic translation why it's almost 100% accurate, or at least the best English translation available. It will not be Abdullah Yusuf Ali or, or these <laughs> other fraudsters. I call them fraudsters and I will call them this way because it is this way as you have shown the audience in, uh, in the website now, how each word is translated differently. Absolutely, brother. And trust me, I will be the first one to buy this Quran if you will tell me beforehand whenever it is going. Like your your zero, your first Quranic translation, send it to me. I'll pay it in five times the price, whatever you sell it for. So that's I will have the first copy, brother. I just and want you to pray that I don't get bored and that I keep going till I finish it all because it's... The project is too big for me for a person. Come on, man. That's a 6,000 6, verses only. And Brother Osama did that in three years. So you can do it as well. Like, imagine, look, look, look. This is our brother Yeshua Amaliyik. He's saying, in lo I'm loving it too. Murad is awesome. So, brother, you have your first love over here. Love for Muslim is saying, Lord Jesus, bless both of you and your families. Thank you. Love for Muslims as well. Gaurav Kumar, who is from India, uh, basically, but he's in probably Singapore. That's Singaporean currency. We are also enjoying at the rate Aram and Saint Murad. Every Syriac version of Romance of Alexander is copied in Quran as Yafud and Madud story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for your love and support. God bless you all. Yes, Brother Murad, where are we going next? Now we will go to Hurain or what mm. we we see in English as virgins. 
<laughs> wide-eyed virgins and I will show you <laughs> something that will make this live stream explode. I'm sure other people know, but those who don't know, they will get shocked. Okay, so we'll go to 3655. So there is 3655, which says uh, Ashabul Jannah. No, that's Ashabul Jannah. I okay, checking. I have a big problem with my computer right now. But I, you have, let me just restart my browser. You will find it in Surah uh, 44, Ayah uh, 54. 54, 44, 54. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother. I am showing it. Okay. I have a problem on my browser. Sorry. I can't do a lot of stuff over here somehow. I might have to get out of the live stream. Somehow my computer is not playing with me today. All right. So, Bahurul Ain. Hurul Ain. Yes, brother. Yeah. Now, the word Hur in itself, uh, what do they translate it as? Hur. Maiden or woman? Woman cannot be translated. That's Nisa. Come on. How can you translate it as woman? But yeah. maidens. Sexy girls. So Let's the word Hur. Yeah. They are very, very sexy girls. FYI. Okay. Uh, Huris, wide eyed, spouse. Uh, maidens, a woman with beautiful, big, and lustrous eyes. Man, that's this guy usable is awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Inspouse them to a fair, wide-eyed maidens. All right, that's that's the kind of translation we are having, brother. Okay, let's look at the word Ain, and I will come back to Hur. Okay, Ain. Ain here is written Ain. Why? Because of the diacritical marks. Mm -hmm. Now, the Quran in other places uses this same word when it talks about Moses striking uh, the wells for people, springs. So in Arabic, if you say Ain, it could mean a spring of water or it could mean I, depending on the diacritical marks that you're using. So oh. here. So here, the word Ain, the guy who put the diacritical marks, made it look like eyes. But of course, it's talking about the spring of water. So here, it says, if you go to the one before it, which is Zawajnehum. Mm -hmm. If you look it means at it, spouse, made them spouse. Yeah, but if you look at it, and you read it in Aramaic, and you remove all these diacritical marks, it will be Zugu, whom, Hiworu, Ainu. This would be how you would read it. Zugu, whom means to grow white, to be white. And Hiworu, it means grapes. So white grapes, meaning fresh grapes, and a spring of water. Okay. So when you will go. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We, this is, this is going above me. So, how did you made zawajnahum into instead of spouse? Because zawj is the basic word for zawaj, which means spouse. So, how did you change that word? I, I can't get it. I tell you, uh, Gabriel Soma when he read the, um, the uh, original. Quran manuscript and this is in uh, brother Rashid in Arabic you can find this he said that this is not exactly Zawajnehu meaning uh, we will marry them to Hurain it mm -hmm. is two words in fact in the original it is okay. Zugu Zugu in itself and okay. in whom and oh. this means, yeah so you this is the original how it's written in the original manuscript so if we wow okay hold on hold on in the original arabic manuscript without the diacritical marking yeah so you are saying this particular word okay i'm 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 going to i'm going to dry it into two so it is written as wow za wow jim that's it yeah yeah 
so that's one word and noon ha and meme as a separate word yes oh my god so how did they make it into one word why what made them make into one word there is a lot of examples like this because people the, the scribes when they copy this into another text especially if you're not writing with the same uh, font if you like it is very easy to get this stuff together to mash them together you see so this is a definite mistake oh my goodness like see so quran was actually made a pornographic uh, 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 book by the people afterwards is that how you are telling me yeah exactly so and you know and you know there is also if people will watch uh, a lot of uh, <clears throat> the episodes that Mel from Sneakers Corner did with Jay Smith he showed pictures of Abraham when when these prophets go to paradise and he is offering them these grapes these red grapes and of course the grape it has a meaning because you make wine from grape that's mm -hmm. why in the Quran you have that people will get wine when they go to Jannah so they will get wine or grapes and it in the both ways it means it is a symbol of the blood of Christ because this is the wine and as you know of course more than me that Jesus said this is the wine you drink and this is my body you eat and stuff like yes that. so wow. and this is this is taken exactly from the Syriac from Mar Ephraim which is Saint Ephraim the Syriac and uh, of course it has to do with going to Jesus and living in this spring of water because the word Jannah itself it means garden so what will you have in a garden you will have a spring of water you will have wine which is a symbol of the blood of Christ and you will have grapes you see so who will go oh, oh man oh man wow <laughs> wow so they act so these people just hated Jesus and they eat like so the this cult already did not accept it, Jesus but they were still looking for the Old Testament to see where it is Jesus right but at the end of the day they still had Jesus in them and uh, they said Allah did not crucify him the sorry Jews did not crucify him but then they made the Jannah into a very distinctive place, which is more like a sexual place. But here again, you have the grape because Jesus said, take this wine. This is my blood. Drink it as often in remembrance of me. And uh, unbelievable. Because if you ask yourself, why did the Quran say uh, red or uh, white grapes? Why didn't he say, let's have, for example, McDonald's? Why white grapes? Well, because it is a symbol. It is not just any food. It's not anything. Everything has a symbol, and it's purely Abrahamic, purely Christian, if you like, and purely Aramaic. You see? Unbelievable, man. Seriously. I, I'm mind-blowing. I'm mind-blown. I'm, I'm, my head is banging in itself with the skull right now. <laughs> Like, okay, let me go back to the Quran now uh, to show where we were. We were here, okay. Now, but but what our brother is saying that here in the Ain, the Zair, the dashes are down below. If we change the dashes down below, because these dashes were added 300 years later, and if we go to Quran chapter number 34, verse number 12, let me go there. The same word you will find it. So remember the picture of this word in your mind. Remember the picture of this word in your mind. Okay. Okay. Ain, Ain, Yanun. The ones who cannot read Arabic. And let's go to 34.12. 34.12. This is about Musa. You see Ain, the same word, but the diacritical marking, the dashes are on the top instead of the bottom. Exactly. On the top instead of the bottom. So when they are on the top, it's a spring. 
So these dashes and diacritical marking were added 300 years later. So somebody had a real perverted mind to do all this nasty stuff in the afterlife because he was really nasty. You see, uh, one of the passions that I have is looking for the Exodus. And there is a place in Egypt. It's called Oyun Musa. It means the springs of Moses. Does it mean the eyes of Moses? What if you tell that to someone? <laughs> <laughs> the eyes of Moses. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, it's very funny. And it's also funny in the Quran. The Quran is laughing at you when you say Hur'in means wide-eyed virgins. This is crazy. And actually, it means that the person who... Uh, I don't know if it's correct to say this or not. But it means that this person uh, didn't understand women. If, if every time you will have a sex with virgins, then it's horrible for you and her. This is a very bad deal. You no, see? No, 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 brother, no. Allah will make them virgin every time you will enter upon them. And they will not have the pain of defloweration, brother. You, they will not have, no. Who, come on, man. That guy was... Nest, like, is, does Islam give women any hurmat at all? W what is woman in Islam? In Islam, a woman is just like a piece of meat to have sex with. Give me one single hurmat of uh, women in, in Islam, brother. One single. Yeah, but you see, then, then this, then it's all a farce. But what I'm telling you, it, it holds good together. This is how the Quran was, and then later these Persians wanted you to know that if you will die in their wars then you will go to the virgins if you can't have these women here you can't get laid here you will get laid there but just come to war you see we want the perfect soldier so this was the later propaganda but the quran in its original form is not saying this you see wow wow so allah was not able to protect his quran absolutely yeah you can say that that's a stupid, idiotic, unproven fact. Okay, but why, why do you say that the zikr is Al-Quran? Uh, because the Muslim says that otherwise zikr is Torah as well. Zikr is uh, Zabur as well. According to Quran, not anybody else. Yes, uh, but, but you should know better now. The word zikr is remembrance. Mm -hmm. And the Quran always says remember, remember, remember. So indeed, we have sent down the remembrance, which is the Torah, mm -hmm. and indeed we are protecting it, you see. So it has nothing to do with the Quran, and the Quran, <laughs> and the Quran has nothing to do with the Quran. <laughs> <laughs> and you are crazy, you know that, right? It, it, I, I wish you could speak in uh, Urdu and Hindi, man. You would be a rock star in Pakistan and India, man. <laughs> it, it's funny, you see. It's funny, but, but what can we say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is crazy. <laughs> Love you, man. Love you, seriously. <laughs> CT is saying Adam is having fun. Man, you know my eyes is, is, is watery right now because how hard I am laughing inside. I can't even control my laugh right now. I am having a fun of my life. I never had so much fun reading the text and knowing the text deep inside before. Never! <laughs> this, is the, this is the best live stream where I am enjoying at most. I'm loving it. I will give you this last one uh, as an example. Of course, we will continue, but I will give you this last example. And it has to do with the name Muhammad mentioned in Surah 48. If you can bring this one, Surah 48, Ayah 29. 48, 29. Here it comes, brother. Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah Ma'ah, Ashad wa al kufar Rahma. So where do you want me to go to? The word Muhammad, if you look at the Dal, it has over it two, uh, we call this Zamma in Arabic. Yeah, two pages. We call it Pesh, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Okay, when you have these two Dhammas, <coughs> does it mean that this is a proper name? Or does this mean that this is a descriptive 
uh, like when, in English when you say uh, uh, adjective, it becomes a verb, right? Adjective, 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 sorry, adjective. So Muhammadun doesn't mean the name, it means an adjective. No kidding, man, that's crazy. Okay, I never, why did I never thought about it? I studied Arabic in grade six, seven, and eight. Like, why did I never thought about it? So this doesn't need Aramaic. Just look at how they put the diacritical marks. This is their <laughs> marks. So when you put these two dumbbells, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I already know where you're going now. <laughs> you see? <laughs> oh, man, I got to mute myself. Please carry on. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. So <clears throat> when you have these two dhammas, it means Muhammadun Rasulullah or praised is the apostle of God. As simple as that. The apostle of God praised and the ones with him ashidda, meaning they are severe over the. I don't like the word kuffar. I like scoffers, which is uh, the more the more accurate one. Oh you man, see? I gotta show it to the people. Sorry, I gotta well, show it not, to the people. In this case, this is not a proper name. This is not Muhammad that you know. This is a uh, description. Thank you. Uh, Gaurav Kumar, thank you for your super chat. Uh, and brother, Huri is grape, but you have to change the other other three words as well. Otherwise, the grape doesn't sound good. Otherwise, you, ha you, are, you are a spouse of a grape. So unless you fix the rest of the words as well, you cannot have a grape over there. OK, so that's point number one. Uh, so yes, but it's the grape. Sneakers Corner, thank you, brother. Be here. And Sneaker Corner is where our brother Murad is usually there. Uh, but now I steal him from the sneakers corner for the time being uh, and thank you sneaker corners from being here in the live stream and your super sticker thank you so very much so what our brother Murad is saying over here is very simple let me show you any Tom Dick and Harry who knows just the basic of the uh, of the Arabic language who has studied just in the high school these double pages double Dhamma Dhamma is in, in English right I say in Urdu is pesh, right? Double pesh. Uh, do peshi, that's how we say it. This actually changes this word from noun to adjective. So if it is a noun, you can say it's a name. If it is a noun. But if it is not a noun, then you cannot take it as a name, but rather you have to take it as the adjective, hence you have to translate it, which means the praised one, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. What happened to my pen? Something is happening fishy with my with my pen now. So I have a huge issue today with my laptop. So this this becomes the praised one. So if it is the praised one, that it is this verse is not talking about Muhammad himself. It is no. talking about somebody else. Yes, it's it's not Muhammad. It is somebody else which is not Muhammad. So that's yes. the whole idea of this particular uh, word. Why they actually take it as a praised one? Why do they do that? Because they have to fit the into the narrative of the Islam. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. This is what it is. Exactly, exactly. So you see, they have shot themselves in the foot when they added these two dhammas because now it made it uh, praised be the apostle of Allah. So actually, you have in English, I, I, I have to tell this to the English speaking audience, that the word Muhammad is mentioned in the Quran only four times. Anything other than that is fraudulent because they give themselves the right to to stuff this word Muhammad into any translation yep and at the same time there is one time which is used as Ahmad and Muslim says five times because one time is Ahmad uh, but Ahmad is not Muhammad these are two different names unless you say they are the same names but yeah that's the difference well if you have a friend called Muhammad and then you are in the street you and you tell him Ahmad come here he will not respond absolutely 
names are different, very different. You see? Absolutely, absolutely. This this you need to remember. Like, like in in Pakistan as well, a lot of people has name as Muhammad and Ahmed. A lot. So, in a gathering, you might be Ahmed there, and you might have Muhammad sitting there as well. And if you call Ahmed, Muhammad will not look at you. And I can say that over here, and I've said that in the past as well. This is a very basic issue in the West, where you guys do not have names as Muhammad and Ahmed. But in the East, Muhammad and Ahmed are the most used names. Uh, Brother Murad, will you agree with me? Muhammad, Ahmed, and then Ali. Yeah, exactly. Same in the Middle East. So Muhammad and Ahmed are the top two names used in Middle East. And, and even the Southeast. And then Ali is used. So they are not the same. Of course, they are not the same at all. <clears throat> So, these were the examples, but I want to show you something else now that is purely Arabic. It has nothing to do with Aramaic, and it has to do with abrogation. Abrogation. Brother, before we go into abrogation, we have Kosser, a Muslima, over here in the live chat. Muslima Kosser, I can see by the comment that you are sending, you are a pure Muslima. So, sister, can't you see that Quran is actually a, a heretical word of uh, christianity so don't you think somebody who is doing a heresy should know what is the true word like seriously do we do i have to say that out loud you still are asking if you if you want to have a debate you can come up whenever you feel like but right now i'm not gonna come and have a debate with you because murad is giving me so much fun so today is not an open live stream. Today we are learning from Murad. Murad, brother, carry on. Next. Okay, this has nothing to do with Aramaic. So I will just show you in Arabic why these people are fraudsters. Uh, you can go to Surah 2, uh, verse 106. 106. Ah. <laughs> okay, let's go to just one Sahih International. And my mouse is not working, man. Seriously, what happened? Seriously speaking, I have a big issue. Other than Mustafa Kamal, I cannot actually do anything. Okay, anyhow, we'll read Sahih International. We do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth better than it or similar to it. Do you not know Allah is over all things? Yes, the only thing that I will ask you to do is to write this word nansakh, which is what they say abrogate, and to write it in Google Translate. Just show the people what will come up when you write this word in Google Translate. Okay. Let me just do that for you. Nansakh into Google Translate. Translate.google.com Arabic to English it says brother that's just that's a really bad thing you 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 are you are debunking islam like this by google translator seriously <laughs> it says we forget but uh, what what else it says something else down there yes nasi forgot overlook leave miss omit sink unlearned Slur cause to be forgot. But no abrogation? No abrogation, brother. None, no abrogation. If you make your keyboard in Arabic, you will say nansakh wa nalsak. In Arabic, nasakh means copy. It does not mean abrogate. This is pure Arabic, simple Arabic, but they, of course, use the word abrogate because they they are using... Copy is yansakh. Yep, Yansak. Right. So Nansakh and Yansakh, same word, means copy. Just Google Translate knows it. And uh, this is how I used to take it in school, and this is what I say in my mother tongue. We do not say abrogate. So they impose this understanding on the Quran and on the translations to go with the Sunnah, which is fraudulent because it was added later by the Abbasids and the Persians. You see, so this is very important. 
and our brother sister Chloe also knows Arabic and she's saying the same thing uh, it, like she's agreeing with you because she also speaks Arabic she lo- lives in over there in the Middle East some time ago she used to and yes Yansak is copy according to Google Translator as well exactly so uh, <clears throat> I would not be giving like the full uh, understanding of this verse now because it will take a lot of time but what I am telling you is that the word abrogate is not in the Quran I do not find it there oh so so if we take this verse as if we ever copy a verse or cause it to be copied no, nasikh. Nasikh is what? no no the other one is uh, yeah. called to be forgotten this is correct no problem yeah if we nasikh is we mansukh it we we cancel it if we ever cancel a verse or cause it to be copied we replace it with a similar one like why no, would no. we replace it with a similar one no no if we do not copy or transcribe which is more correct and it is not a verse but i will not tell you now because this will be uh it will lead into another rabbit hole no but aya can... is is a sign aya basically is a sign so yeah exactly if... exactly aya is a sign we do not transcribe a sign or cause it to be forgotten lest we bring forth another sign similar or better the signs of god which is the miracles of god as oh man <laughs> Has nothing to do with... I'm loving it. There's no rabbit hole with me. I know I am in sign. There's like there like seven verses where it's it says about the sign of Muhammad that we have not given you no miracle or a sign. So I know I is sign. A lot of people do not. So I can I can live with that. So don't go into the rabbit hole. But like this is awesome. <laughs> Translate yeah, so it one more time for right. our people. We do not transcribe a sign or cause it to be forgotten unless we bring forth. One that is similar or better. Don't you know that God is about is over everything capable? Simple. Wow. And any time the word ayah comes in the Quran, any time it means sign, because it is only mentioned as ayah in the Arabic, then translated only as sign in the English, or else you have no dignity, because this is the exact same word you say the exact same thing in the English. So let's say you have. Ten times the word ayah in Arabic, it should be ten times the word sign in English. End of story. Why here it is sign? Why here it is verse? If you want to say the verse, it will be like kalam Allah or yeah. something like this. But like, you know, you see, if, if I mouse over, it still says a sign. Because when we talk about the miracle of Muhammad, because Quran talks about it and people said, give us a sign, give us a sign. And Muhammad said, wait, wait, I don't have a sign. I don't have a sign. And Allah said, we have not given you a sign. You are just a, a, a warner. All of these verses, every time it says ayah, it says ayah. Every time. So when all of, so why, 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 why did they don't actually go and say, this is a verse. Why don't you Allah give you a verse? You see, right? when, yeah, the word Nansakh, of course, Google, you cannot rely on Google. It just says copy. But the correct one in my translation, my future translation, will be transcribe. This is the exact word which uh, has all the meaning. So when you say Al Torah Mansukha, it doesn't mean that the Torah, the Torah, is abrogated. It means that the Torah is transcribed. Ah. So it is not a bad thing. It was transcribed so, by, uh, and and the commandments were transcribed. All this stuff, no problem. Awesome. And here it is, you know, be aya, a sign, same exactly. word, you same word. The, because you see this fraudster, he has it as a sign here, and the other time he has it as a verse. I want yeah. the people to see this. Yeah, that's why I'm saying sign. Why, why has a sign not given to you, O Muhammad, like the previous uh, previous people has been given? Let's exactly. go to another verse. Let's go to another yeah, verse. Check it, check it every time. Then twenty. And you will find that sign fits perfectly. Aya, aya, 
I ask once again, they ask why no sign has been given to you, no miracle has been given to you. Another, let's go to another one, 13.7. Why has there been no sign to you, O Muhammad? Ayatun, ayatun min Rabbi, from your Lord, why have a sign not been given to you? Let's go to another one, 29.50. It says the same thing. It says, why there have been no sign from your Lord? Ayat, a sign from your Lord has been given to you. Then we go to 6.109. A Muhammad, give us a sign, just one sign. We will, we will agree with you. We will, we will agree with you. Ayatun, ayatun li mumin bi akulli. We will agree with you if you give us a, one single sign. And then Muhammad said, Ah, sorry, bye bye, Tata. I don't have a sign because previous scriptures were given a sign. So there is no ayah again. Bil ayati. No sign. So why do when we go to this verse, why the sign suddenly change into a verse? <laughs> Man, this is awesome. There's no rabbit hole, brother. This, this is no rabbit hole. This is an open thing. <laughs> Very easy. And uh, whoever does anything other than this is actually a fraudster. Because if it's written this way in Arabic, then you should translate it only one word in English, and that is sign or signs. End of story. And get out of it. Don't put your agenda into the translation. You see? MashaAllah. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Let's say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Let all the devils go away, okay? Now, still it is a sign, not a verse. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, God, he made a sign for the Israelites as he he's talking in the Quran or Allah, he made a sign. And then he always says, you people, you always forget what I gave you. You always forget my grace. You always forget my signs. So remember, فذكر, remember. Keep remembering in this remembrance, the book of remembrance. The Quran is the book of remembrance. End of story. So you remember the signs of God, then you become humble, then you go to God. End of story, nothing more than that. Awesome, awesome. Man, Actually, you, this is you... all that I, uh, that I prepared, and if you want to just go into other... Uh, rabbit holes if you like no problem or if oh, people want to ask anything no problem brother uh, yeah let's see if people would like to ask something anybody who has a question please tag at the rate adam seeker and ask your question but it, while we get the questions from them we are already 15 seconds behind brother i want to say a huge thank you to you for coming up here today and give us this uh, this lovely awesome time uh like seriously speaking i am delighted that you are here and this this shouldn't be the end you gotta come to my Inc. urdu channel as well sometime my urdu live streams only happen on in saturday 9 p.m pakistan standard time every saturday uh which means if i convert it into us, US new york time it will be uh 11 a.m new york time so if you could come in for an hour over there as well sometime in in, in any saturday i will live translate it for our uh, people uh, so you can come in at any time like after after nine you can come in at 10 or 11 or 12 because that's like a good four or five hours live stream because i do a lot of debates over there so you will you're going to have some fun over there as well uh, I would love you to be there. Uh, please do join me there as well. For sure, for sure, no problem. Uh, so we have another Gaurav Kumar said, praised one in history of humanity is Lord Jesus. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Thank you so very much. You are so right, my friend. And thank you for your super stick yes, it, chat. It means that, it means that, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And uh, by the way, brother Yasin, do you know anything in Syriac language about Yasin? Uh, this one I don't. 
because uh, the books that I gave you, they don't reference it. So I really don't know, but I, I do know one which is Noon. You know Noon? Noon is the whale, according to Tibri and Kurtabi and Jalalain. Yeah, noon it is, is correct. The it's, it's the fish, the fish of Jonah. So, but other than that, I don't know the uh, the other uh, openings. Still, I'm still looking into it. So, noon is the fish, but that same fish is holding the earth, and when it sneezes, the earth shakes. <laughs> yeah, you see, in uh, in the ancient times, it was this flat Earth model, which was also a geocentric model. So, some people. They, uh, I don't know why, only in the Islamic world, they added to the flat earth that it was over a whale. So I don't know, that's crazy, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Peggy is saying something. Let's see what she is saying. Okay, uh, I saw her comment in YouTube, but I can't bring up her comment over here. I don't know what happened. So anyhow, let me read her comment. Miss Peggy saying, BHIs, BHIs aren't Israelites only wannabes at the red? Okay, she, she's talking to somebody else. Forget that part. My bad. Okay, Quran yeah. 564. The Jew says Allah's hand is tied up or something else. Thanks. No, Caroline, it does say Allah's hands are tied up. 564. That Jews are saying you're to Muhammad that your Allah's hands are tied up. Brother, let's go over here. Let's see. Brother, do you want to translate it? Yadullah Maklula, you mean? Yep. I don't know in Aramaic, but in Arabic, yes, it means that it's tight. Tied up. Allah's hands are tied up, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh let me just show the verse. Sorry, I'm, I'm not even showing it on screen. My bad. Wow, you remember the Quran by heart? No, no. Just when you said it, I... Uh... I knew it in Arabic. Ya qalat al-yahud yadu Allah maghlula ghullat aydihum walu aynu So Jews were saying it to Muhammad there is a full tafsir out uh, behind this which uh, I do not want to go into uh, at this moment but this is and yes Anna Banana Jews were making fun of Muhammad and his Allah saying your Allah's hands are tied up I don't, uh, I, I really ignore the tafsirs because they will kill your time and then uh, they are all wrong. They are totally wrong because they come much later and as I told you they are being done by Persians. And just look at Bukhari, where is this guy coming from? He's from Bukhara. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan, yeah. Bukhara, like uh, approximately 2,000 kilometers away from Mecca, right? Okay, then end of story. Don't tell me anything about a guy in Saudi Arabia. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> there is literally no one from the... Uh, other than Ibn Abbas, whose tafsir most of the Sunni scholars do not agree with. Other than him, uh, uh, every other guy is not from the Makkah. Yes, it's from the Persian area. Uh, all the Sahah which is called the Sahah al sitta which is uh, Bukhari, Muslim, all these people, they come from this area of Persia. So these exactly. people, they don't know Arabic. And they don't <laughs> know Syriac, and they don't know Hebrew, and they don't know Aramaic, and they don't know the Holy Land, and, and they shouldn't be talking about such, this uh, Abrahamic religions, ever. Yeah, and actually, I... people say, uh, I will just say this, and I will give you the mic. Please. People say that, uh, well, tradition passes by word of mouth. I say that is perfectly fine. But that's when you're in the area, not when you are from another area talking about someone who keeps wandering, who keeps going from a country to the other. So the aboriginals of uh, Australia, they might have stories that go way back, and I would believe them because they were there. They kept being there same land same stories keep passing on i would believe them and i would believe people from the holy land or from yemen but i will not believe al bukhari who kept going all the way to mecca and then up and down and no no no, no. this is lunacy so uh, oral tradition 
and do survive in places where people don't go off wandering and immigrating all the time. Like if you look at the the Huns and the Turks and uh, these people who used to uh, invade Rome and Persia, you cannot find their traditions easily. You only know about them from Rome or Persia. Why? Because they don't have a nation that they could easily keep passing on the stories to their young ones and to the later generations. Unlike somewhere like India or China. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, oral traditions do survive, but not in this Islamic case at all. Absolutely, brother. I agree with you 110%. And yes, Islam should not be called an Abrahamic religion. Islam doesn't even know about Abraham at all. Does not know anything. That, let me say, does not know jack about Abraham. Gaurav Kumar has a question for you, brother. I have a question. Is it correct that on Dome of the Rock, it is just engraved Muhammad Abdullah and not Muhammad bin Abdullah? Yeah, true. It means the praised one is the servant of God. End of story. It doesn't mean Muhammad of Islam. This is a later addition. This is a later understanding. Absolutely, brother. Awesome. Our sweetie G, who is our Indian sister, she is saying, Adam Seeker, my request also, please do visit Adam Seeker Urdu channel Saint Murad. People will be delighted to listen to you. So she is saying, Murad, please come to our Urdu channel so that the Indians and Pakistani could enjoy the lovely talk that you just have given us. Yes, I will try to do that and I will tell you in, in our Amen. chats. Yeah. Amen. By the way, everyone knows that I go live on Saturday at 9 p.m. Pakistan time. So that's my pet time. So everyone is already there when I go live. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's how it is. Thank you brother for coming up uh, for showing us these uh, beautiful things and uh, These ayahs and everything and uh, I, I I'm loving it and I Wish we could had more So next time come up with more stuff man. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Well, you see I am uh, I'm putting all my effort this time in uh, in the translation because I see that uh, a lot of people are doing very good work with the historicity of Islam. But no one is putting... Of course, I know that Osama, he did a great uh, translation. But the difference between mine and him will be that his translation, he... Like, he literally wants to show you how Islam thinks today. But this is not what I want to show. I want to show the Quran resurrected from its old archaic form so that a researcher when he reads it he could totally understand or not totally but like very closely understand what this book was about so that's why i am not doing a lot of live shows to these uh, days and very few videos because this is killing my time brother but thank you so very much for coming here i know that's a huge task According to Osama, he took over three years uh, to complete his uh, Quran translation. Uh, and three years is a long time, uh, even though it's just 6,000 verses. But when you are, when you get stuck, because one of his story was that he got stuck at a word and he just, he just couldn't find it in any Arabic dictionary. And he's like, I, I, I'm an Arab. I, I, I lived all my life in Egypt. I know Arabic. I, I was born speaking Arabic. Like this word has no meaning in Arabic. So you know what? He he called up uh, uh, Father Zechariah Butrus because Father Zechariah Butrus is also an Arab. So he called him. He called Father Zechariah Butrus and he said, "Father, can you please tell me? Like I can't find it anywhere. I've never heard this word. Like what is happening?" And and Father Zechariah Butrus told him, "Hey, Usama, did you even think about it that?" This word is a non-Arabic origin. And then he said, uh, no. Isn't Quran supposed to be in pure Arabic? Because Osama was never a Muslim, right? Mm. And he's like, yeah, there are so many words which are non-Arabic in Quran. 
and then he went into a dilemma and then he started reading the other languages for example let me just show you now now that we are here i'm gonna go to surah yasin 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 surah 36 so we'll go to altafsir.com so you will see how yasin is being translated according to the arab scholars right mm. so we'll go here to tafsir and we'll go to arabic and we'll go to like yasin nobody knows what yasin means right nobody knows what it means right i have a guess but uh, it's just a guess like, but like people say that these are the uh, haruf uh, mukatta. mukatta. So there is no meaning for it, right? Yeah. But if we look at Tafsir ibn Kathir, because you can't find that in English. They don't even translate these things in English. They, they just skip them, right? So you have to stay in English. And it says, according to Ibn Abbas, and that's why people hate Ibn Abbas, right? Because Ibn Abbas was with Muhammad, was from Makkah, Yet, they do not like what Ibn Abbas says. Okay. And Akrima and Az-Zahak. These are all the people who lived with Muhammad at the time of Muhammad. And they are saying it. Hassan was Safiyan bin Udayr. All of them are living with Muhammad at the time of Muhammad. They are saying, Yaseen ba ma'ana ya insan. Yasin means human, insan. Mm. These, these are the people who live with Muhammad. They just skip that part. Why? So Allah supposedly, that the, sorry. That these traditions, uh, sorry, I will get back to you. I, I just doubt these traditions from the get-go. But yes, go on. Uh, sorry, please explain it. I, my English is not, not that good. What do you mean by get-go? I doubt. I doubt, uh, I, I mean from the beginning, I doubt that these traditions actually mm -hmm. happened. These things are written after the time to ensure the ruling of the Abbasids. And uh, but this is a very long story, of course, about the, the heritage, how uh, Muhammad goes way back to Ibn Abbas. But no problem, you can just go on and I will tell you my guess about Yasin and... Uh, because I want to know what people think in, in the comments about it. Awesome. So so he's saying that it means yeah, insan. So Allah is swearing by humans. I don't know why Allah would swear by humans. That's another problem for some other day. And then uh, Malik and Zaid bin Aslam says that this is the Ismaullah Ta'ala. This is the name of Allah Ta'ala. Name of Allah. So... <laughs> They don't know that. So, insan, so, so if it is the name of Allah and it means insan, and by the way, why I came here? Because Ya insan in the Lugha of Habasha, in the mm. language of Habasha. So, now if Ethiopia. we take Ethiopian language, so why would an Ethiopian word be part of the Quran? You see the problem here? Yeah, well, yeah of course. And then, then suddenly it becomes the name of Allah. So there's, a, there's an Ethiopian language in the Quran. And then it's, I don't know. But like, can you please tell us about the Lisanul Arabia or the tongue of the Arabia? Can you please explain that a little if you have time and you can do it short, like five minutes? Yeah, you see the word Lisan, it means uh, tongue or dialect. But the word Lugha, it means language. So the Quran is saying, I am in an Arabic tongue, not in an Arabic language. This means that you can be in an Aramaic language, and at the same time, your tongue is Arabic. And the word Arab, this is also a long story, but let me tell you. The word Arab, if you put a dot over it, it means Gharb, meaning West. So the people of the West. That's why the word Maghrib, which is a country, Morocco, uh, you could say Ma'rib. In, in Syria, you say Ma'rib, or Maghrib, means the people of the West. So it's a West tongue, Western Syriac tongue. Uh, 
and this is the the word Arabic so there is no problem there you see yeah because because Quran actually says that we have revealed this Quran in the tongue of Arabia okay yes uh, and most of the people says it means pure Arabic but if we check Quran 578 let's read that together so that we will see what is happening Quran 578 it says isn't that the same word when Allah says Arabia so Daud is David how can Daud is a language you see what I'm saying so in the revelation in David what the hell is revelation tongue of David okay Lisan al Daud wa Isa okay so yeah. Quran says that we have revealed this Quran in the tongue of Arabic if we look at the context of how Quran uses that right uh, yeah. even in Quran Quran talks about Lisan al Daud so means it is not about a language it's talking about the people who are speaking that particular language at that area no yeah exactly yeah. so there is nothing called Arabic language when Quran was revealed suppose it supposedly revealed in other words no because the earliest thing that you have at the very best it goes <clears throat> like parallel with the Quran nothing before so you should have Arabic operating uh, time before uh, the Quran but you never see that so uh, it's safe to say, uh, at least this is my judgment, it's safe to say that the Quran is the very first Arabic as we know it today book. The very first. Nothing before it. Because it was the original, uh, the very first project of Arabization that when the Pers Persians Arabized this Aramaic text, this very first version is the Quran that we know today. Then later, morphed into this Arabic and uh, when people say that Arabic was the uh, <clears throat> the original language uh, written in like the tablets of uh, the Ten Commandments there is something to this it's not that far-fetched because like for example if you see the the letter Qaf it is the same as Qaf in Arabic so the Arabic uh, morphed from Aramaic and Hebrew no doubt you see but uh, the Arabic of today of course is not the Arabic of uh, of the Hebrews before or something mm -hmm. interesting interesting analogy interesting interesting that 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 does works with it absolutely so Lisan al Arabia does not mean Arabic language in reality it just means the language which is being spoken at the location of Arabia. Exactly. And Arabia meaning west. West of what? West of Persia. See, it says Lisanan Arabian. Yeah, Lisanan the it, Arabian. The, the word before it is Musaddaq. What does it mean? Con uh, well, confirming. Yeah. So this is a book confirming but in an Arabic tongue. Lisanul Arabia. That's just it. So this book confirms the language of Arabia, but the same thing is Lisan al Daud, the same word. So Daud, Lisan of Daud, human tongue, like Daud is David. Like same word, same analogy is used in two different locations of Quran. And I, I, I loved how you described it earlier to begin with our, our live stream today, that if, if a book is saying if a book is written in a particular language and yet it is saying that it is in this language that's just stupid idiotic so we are not talking about a language in essence we are talking about something in a little different manner you know because there's nothing called an arabic language back then and i fully agree with you because brother imagine when the Quran was revealed there was no diacritical marking right yeah there was no dots as well so when do you not have the vowels and 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 when the language is in its base 
when it is starting when it has no ground that's when you don't have vowels you see aramaic is like english in english you don't need any diacritical marks you can understand everything so the quran was like that you can understand the aramaic totally 100% but the people who grabbed it later they they had to impose their agenda so they added these diacritical marks that's what happened that's why the, this book is very misread and misunderstood because the, the language is corrupted when they arabized it they corrupted it oh when they arabized it they corrupted it exactly. so basically just by the by reading the ahruf you will know how to read it in in essence in aramaic yes not me but someone who knows aramaic yes how about when you read arabic without diacritical marking right now will you be able to understand it yes i will logically i will go to better conclusions than with the diacritical marks which force me into stupid meanings you okay, see so that's why if you read the tafsir you will not see diacritical marking yeah at all so there will be just of just a few diacritical marking because it's important for them yes to to show it but otherwise in reality it is no point in making diacritical marking but like right now it's important at certain locations because just because of the change of diacritical marking they actually made a different word but in reality they did not had to make a different word back then and this is this is this is this is what i'm saying and why would you write a book missing the uh, the diacritical marks from the beginning unless you have some serious issues in your head of course this never happened it was perfectly fine <laughs> you see oh man oh man by the way can you please translate this part if you don't mind it says uh, clear proof that uh, the world from before uh, is not like world of before what is this <laughs> 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 oh, uh, maybe the word zaman. Mm -hmm. mm, it doesn't mean before, because here qablu is before, badu means after. So zaman, in in the ancient understanding, it could mean something like uh, the underworld. It might. Uh -huh. So you see, this is. Uh, a big problem because if someone doesn't know what the ancient understanding is like for example when the quran speaks about the sky being a building or a construction it means it literally if you type flat earth in google you will find exactly what i'm telling you it's uh, it's a dome that covers the flat earth so it's a literal dome that's why people they don't know and they keep saying that uh, the Quran is saying uh, miracles and stuff because they don't know exactly the ancient understanding. That's why I gave you this part to read, but <laughs> you don't want to say it out loud. So Quran <laughs> and its tafsir even are written in such a deceptive way that if you go back to the ancient language, it is stupidity and idiotic. By the way, do read it. This is... Uh, uh, a tibri of uh, of uh, uh, alham alhamdulillah rabbil alamin rahman rahim maliki yawmiddin uh, alham 3 uh, tibri of alham 3 okay 4 the, sorry maliki yawmiddin yeah at tibri at tibri from persia who doesn't know arabic uh, absolutely brother <laughs> then i will not waste time <laughs> let's do that later i but want the aramaic i want the people who know the, the real meaning you see but people like it right <laughs> yeah it's fun it is fun thank you guys and thank you everyone for being here uh may the lord bless each and every one of you who are here and we will going to pray murad that you will finish your translation of quran and we will soon have your quranic translation 
uh, with all the uh, references that how it is this word is not an arabic word but rather an aramaic or a syriac uh, word uh, we will be waiting for that brother thank you so very much for being here with us uh, for the live viewers i'm sorry this was not an open live stream uh, as you know i always put a link in the live stream for any muslim to join in but today was a closed live stream because we had a guest and i wanted him to show as much as possible but uh, i'm i'm a very bad host you know i i can't stop myself i'm i'm always energetic i i so please sorry and i humbly apologize for interrupting our brother saint murad today i'm sorry for that but thank you so very much for being patient with me while murad no, was talking and i was adding it's no problem it's just that uh, it's my personality that i am a little cold i don't know why but uh, it doesn't mean that i am annoyed so no problem sir <laughs> <laughs> thank you so very much i i really appreciate that and i'm like a baby you know when i see new things i get excited so i'm like a baby Gaurav Kumar, thank you so very much for your super chat once again. That is why Quranic Arabic, everyone beautify and say it is out of the world, not normal Arabic. All says it is miracle, but reality it is. It has Aramaic root. Absolutely, brother, uh, you just got it right. Thank you, everyone. God bless you all. Have a blessed day, evening, or night, wherever you are, and do not forget to subscribe to our brother Saint Murad's channel. which is very easy to find you just have to search saint murad and you will find him that's not a problem i saint murad's youtube channel is the first link in the description of the video at the same time i have shared his link many times in the video already and our brother miracle john paul dominic 99.99 super sticker and it says over there it says you are amazing thank you brother murad that's for you i he said you are amazing so thank you brother murad for being so amazing thank you everyone god bless you all yeshua akbarul azim